Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. Today we're very excited. We are. Genuinely so, because we've got PRS in the house. PRS in the house! And chocolate cookies on the side! <laughs> so we're going to spend pretty much the whole day talking about PRS guitars, not just USA ones, but uh, SE Student Edition ones as well. Is that what it stands for? I think so, SE Student Edition. I didn't I'm know pretty that. sure that's what Carl Santana the nod from the man. said. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I must admit, it's a tough way to earn a living, but someone's got to do it. Do you know, I'm funny, because... I'm funny. Well, I am. <laughs> but that's literally what I was about to say. Okay. And you stole the line from my mouth. So, when um, you guys might know, if you're uh, customers of Anderton's, that um, for about the last four or five years, Anderton's has stocked the, the SE range, but uh, hadn't done the American range for a while. Um, so, I kind of fallen back in love with these guitars and. Um, I, people ask quite a lot, you know, what, why did I fall out of love with them? I kind of never really fell out of love with them. I just kind of, there was a lot of stores in the UK selling PRS and, you know, Andertons weren't selling very many. This is going back four or five years. So we kind of just said, let's just change things around and do some other brands for a bit. But actually now PRS have kind of realized that because the brand is so magical and mystical, that actually it kind of, they needed to go back to why they were cool in the first place, which was where hardly anywhere stocked it. And you had to kind of get in your car and travel a few miles to go and see one. And then when you got there, there'd be this big lavish display and it was all cool. So we kind of thought, you know, I think PRS is sort of back to that now. So we're going to get back into them. And it's a cool opportunity as well, because there is a new guitar for 2013. Well, or at least there are some changes to their most popular guitars for 2013. So it's a good opportunity for myself and Chappers to tell you about them. Is a custom 22. Indeed. Uh, in whale blue. What, what kind of whale? Just whale. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one kind of whale, Lee. Um, HFS pickups, hot fat presumably screams. It's a, presumably it's a blue whale. I presume it's a blue whale. <laughs> Otherwise, well. if it was a different coloured whale, it wouldn't be blue, would it? Anyway. I, I, I really don't know where uh, where Lee's <laughs> well, going with this, uh, this whale uh, concept he's got here. Sorry, I really Aluminium stop tail, bringing in the spec here. Uh, aluminium stop tail. Say aluminium in American. Aluminium. Yeah. I feel dirty now. <laughs> it feels wrong. Aluminium. Jaguar. Jaguar. Um, what other words are there? Um, tap. Tomato. Tomato. Tap. We don't say faucet, we say tap. No, and we don't. We, oh, yes, we do. Sorry. Well, you know, do you Pavement. Say, Pavement. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else about this is differently? Um, well, couple of aesthetic things. Uh, the birds are, if New. you've got um, an older PRS guitar, you'll either have one with just completely white birds, which actually last year were, were plastic birds, um, and this year now are sort of abalone filled birds. Or you might have, if it's slightly older, uh, and we have got a couple around here, sort of the outlined birds, which they did on some of the limited edition ones. I'm quite interested. There were, the chap from PRS was telling us that, that Paul, as in Paul Reed Smith, um, likes to kind of make changes to the guitar, minor, minor changes, without really telling anybody. So, so that so at some point the bridge has gone over to being made of aluminium. Interesting to sort of think, you know, presumably that reduces the weight very slightly, obviously changes the tone slightly, but again, it, it, you don't really sort of, it, this, it doesn't sort of become a new model. It just, it's just a natural progression as he sort of, I've even got on this one here, I've got the, the custom 24. The, the, the grub screw and the intonation screw and the spindle on the machine heads have been changed to brass at some point. So again, so the thing is, there is a bit of a sort of a, a, a sort of a running joke about Paul and sort of changing the screws on the back of the guitar and listen to the difference in tone. But it's yeah. things like that that make him a stickler for detail and make PRS what it yeah. is really. So if you don't, if you know nothing about PRS, it, it's essentially that, that most of the models follow this kind of. Um, double cut sort of style. Uh, it's a mahogany body with a mahogany set neck, uh, a, a carved maple top, um, and typically a rosewood fretboard. Um, and again, you know, that clearly it's sort of in the, in the sort of the Gibson camp with regards to the tone woods that have been selected. 
And it's often, I think, probably unfairly compared to a Les Paul because really, apart from the tone woods, it's a, complete, that's, it's a that's completely different machine. Pretty much like, where the, I've often the said similarities that end. Isn't people it? talk about the Holy Trinity, you know, and I, I think that's a bit of a myth. The thing is that for me, PRS has its own sound. Yeah. It's a very unique sounding guitar. And I think, again, watching some videos with Paul recently, even he's probably only just beginning to sort of realise that the you know the PRS voice is quite a distinct, different voice to anything else, and it's mm. becoming you know it's not a question of oh you know you're hit. <laughs> and we're laughing and growling because outside they started tarmacking uh, a hole in the drive. And when we say tarmacking, we mean we actually mean tarmacking, actually using tarmac. Not not yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take a small coffee and cookie break and get right back to you. <laughs> I think the thing is that Paul Reed Smith is on the search for the ultimate tone. Yeah. And he's never going to end. There's a few people in the world, aren't there? You know, amp designers and guitar makers that just kind of. And I suppose as you get older and your ears change and, you know, what you maybe thought was the perfect tone 10 years ago, you kind of think, you know, I'm going to change this and change that. And so many times, you know, Rob and I have talked about happy accidents that happen with products. And it's kind of. There's no. There's no. Hello. Yeah, exactly like that. Yeah. yeah. So that <coughs> there's no book that says if you use this material combined with this material, it's going to sound like this. It is just a question of saying, well, I wonder what happens if yeah. you know we we use different materials to make the bridge. We wind the pickups differently. We um, change the thickness of the fretboard. You know, or we change the. Uh, isn't there a story about Paul made like? 20 different necks where the headstocks all look like a fraction different kind of angle, angle, angle. just to just to literally sort of decide I'm which sure there is, is. The one. and the thing is the end result is an amazing sounding guitar to me PRS is all about kind of a slightly mid-range focused yeah. woody open sounding guitar Lee tell me what the difference is tonally between a 24 and a 22 well the, basically the difference is uh, the way, way that the pickup placement is so you can see actually that where the bridge is positioned on the 24 compared to the 22 means that on the, on the 22 you can actually separate the pickups out a little further whereas on the 24 they're slightly closer together which should in effect give a greater tonal difference between the two pickups on the 22 compared to the two pickups on the 24 truth uh, and you can get the 22 in either a stop tail or a trim, mm. but you can only get the 24 in a trim. Interesting chappers fact, mm. I really, really love, prefer the sound of the trim, but I block mine off. Okay. And, and I find a blocked off PRS trim to be, for me personally, totally superior to the hardtail. Well, and I think it's because there's more adjustment available and yep. there's a lot more mass to it. And I've, loved, I've always loved that sound. So we've both got guitars here with the same pickups in it. We've got the, the HFS, which stands for Hot, Hot Fat, fat and screams. And screams. Is that right? Um, That's right. And the, the, the bridge, uh, sorry, the neck pickup is a vintage bass. You can, if you want to, uh, elect to have your guitar fitted with 5708s. Um, that'll either be a sort of a, a special order, or you might just find, if you look at the little swing tag on the headstock, the pit, it'll tell you whether or not you've got um, 5708s, 5708s, sorry, or the HFS ones. Um, you can also on PRS elect to go for uh, two different neck profiles.
So PRS used to always describe their necks as wide, thin or wide, fat, and they've basically recently changed the way they name their neck profiles. There's been a slight change, blending some of the old 80s shapes with some new changes. And basically the 24, the 24, Sorry. you now get what they call pattern thin or pattern regular. And on the 22 you get pattern thin or pattern. Now I've got here the pattern thin, and I'm gonna try and describe this to you as narrower across than something like a fender, in my opinion, but with a similar depth to a fender, in terms of this way. Um, the regular is, feels the same this way, but with, with a, a few extra mil behind in terms of chunk. So perhaps feel, I wouldn't have said either of them feel terribly Gibson-y. No. It, it's, um, yeah, it's a bit unique. It's a bit like sometimes when you pick up a Music Man guitar and it's just a slightly different take on the neck. So you just sort of go, hmm. I mean, certainly this, this feels, this feels nice for chord stuff, but if you're gonna go with a regular, I think you've got to be kind of comfortable with a slightly chubbier neck up here. I think it's none of them are really chub though, and it's all subjective no. based on hand size. Because yeah. I mean, for example, I got regular to big hands or big palms, and I've always found PRS to be yeah. on the small side, but yeah. always comfortable. I mean, certainly, yeah, we're not talking like baseball bat 59 no. Les Paul sort of no. stuff here. Um, what do I prefer? I think I prefer what I think I prefer the thin yeah. uh, pattern thin. Um, although you know, again, there's not a massive difference between the two. I'm sure. I mean, if you came to Anderton's, we'd have both uh, types on on the wall. Just pick them down and see which one you preferred, and then you know, take it from there. But I think pattern thin is probably going to be to the me, popular one. To me, they feel a little popular. tiny bit thicker <clears throat> than the previous gauges. I may be wrong, but they feel a little tiny bit thicker, which actually is quite a nice thing to me. Yeah. I like a handful of wood. <laughs> So the pickup switching um, has evolved over the years on PRS guitars. The very first ones that I remember had uh, a rotary switch. And in fact, uh, Rob, if you can just, I nearly called you Paul then. That's I meant fine, Rob. go ahead. Um, look at so that, look at the that very code. first ones uh, had a rotary switch. So this control here uh, selected your pickups and one, two, three, four, five. It was always a five way switch. Which I always found really awkward. Yeah, um, I didn't like really it. Not really tour friendly for me because yeah. if you're slippery and sweaty and I get sweaty because I'm a hairy big dude, yeah. it was a little bit awkward. So there aren't many guitars like that anymore though you can still spec it if you want to. Um, he says, and then of course, except I could have used this one, look, which has also got the rotary switch on it like that. Um, you may have seen, again, uh, when Ted McCarty got involved with, with PRS, he did some guitars with just a straightforward Gibson-style three-way switch on it. And a coil tap, which is what I have on my PRS, and I love it. So on the new Custom 24 and 22, we have a five-way blade switch. So I'm kind of super in my comfort zone here. It's always been my favorite method of switching pickups. It's just with a simple blade switch. Um, now, two pickups, but five positions. So how does that work? Position one, three, and five are what you'd expect. So neck pickup, both together, bridge pickup, or as PRS called them, the, the bass and treble pickup. So position two is basically the treble humbucker and the, the bass single coil, uh, which if I remember rightly, the bass one is the one without the screws on, on the front here. So mm -hmm. that's a little weird, and I'll show you how that sounds. In fact, I should just show people how it sounds. Show people how it sounds, Lou. So neck pickup, neck humbucker. Um, Nice and warm, both humbuckers. A little 
little bit brighter. Bridge humbucker. So that's all pretty much what you'd expect. So position two historically would have been two single coils, one from the uh, treble pickup and one from the bass pickup out of phase to give you a very stratty sort of tone, but it's different now. So we've got position two is the full uh, bridge humbucker and one of the coils from the neck. <laughs> maybe a little bit honkier than a standard kind of just single coil sound. Position four is the uh, treble slug pickup. Now the slug one is the one without the screws in it, so it's this one, if you can see where I'm pointing at, uh, with the um, bass single coil, so the one with the screws. So these two, so this will be more traditional out of faith. <laughs> Just jump between those two. It's a little bit thinner and brighter in position four. A little bit thicker and bassier in position two. So what I'll do is I'll give you the same tones, but through the orange rock above ah, 50s clean channel. Good shout. On the 22. Do it. On. You're on. You need to press your. Get off the super exciting Take game. Get out the dirt. You just snapped a three thousand pound guitar. In half, <laughs> uh, with my butt cheek. He hasn't really just that way. Careful though, because that is quite. Yeah, it is kind of restricting I'll put my it groove. Back. Let's put it back. It's restricting my groove, Captain. So this is position one. That's position one. Yes, that's position one. Okay. In that case, then my entire segment was back to front because I always refer to the uh, neck pickup as position one. So giving you an interesting insight into Captain's tonal preferences. Absolutely. So bear in mind, obviously, I've done it the wrong way around, so I apologise. But hopefully you still saw what setting I was on, so it won't matter. But now so, we'll do it correctly. Here's the real position one. Deep and crisp and even. Yes. Two. Bit more beef. That has got almost as much beef as a Finder's lasagna, which is mainly horse. <laughs> uh, what's the next number? Four. In counting, four. four. Pretty sounding, isn't nice, it? isn't it? Yeah. Five it. Mm -hmm. Dark did, did you notice tasty. how much bass boomed in when, very it, when we hit the five? Very basic. Here's the one. The five. I like Don't it. forget, you can change the tone dramatically by altering the volume knob too. And the tone, in fact, I noticed that, particularly on the drive sound. Sorry, Rob. That's fine. Um, mm. And we should talk about the knobs then. You will find, as soon as the, the PRS volume knob is not only ergonomically nicely positioned to use. It's a beautiful shape. It's just really smooth. Like it's it, very it almost, easy to use. It's so, there's so little resistance there. You could almost be forgiven for thinking it feels a bit cheap, you know, but it's it's not. It's just like an resistance incredibly- Resistance is futile. It is. It's actually very, very high-end pots they use in PRS. And just a touch of the little finger gives you yeah. all the adjustment you need. But I like the tone, to be honest with you. I really, I really like the tone. And that's that's with the tone about halfway down on the on the neck pickup, and it doesn't sound muffled, it just sounds no. warmer. Let me show you how I use the volume control on the Shame. PRS because I'm a do you big... don't by chance turn it up or down, do you? I do. It's I was going to do. <laughs> You've ruined my joke, Lee. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. So bring it a little bit in. So I got very used <clears throat> to gigging old school. Yep. Where I would bring a little bit in for the rhythm. Basically where it starts to bite. There. <coughs> For a lead 
boost, bring it all in. <laughs> It cleans up it does. really, really beautifully. So there's loads and loads of colours available on uh, from PRS. Uh, to see all of them, you can go to the PRS website. But if you want to see them in the flesh, uh, Anderson's keeps about 25 different custom models in stock, and we're always rotating the colours around. So come to the store or check the website where they're all photographed, and you can see them. Um, what else is funky? Nothing. Nothing. We come with a really nice case. I know what I was going to tell you. So. <laughs> I'm going to talk for a second about the, the ten top because for many many years I um, was under the impression that, that a guitar was graded as having a ten top by PRS uh, if it was like a ten out of ten maple and you can see well you won't be able to see because the camera's too far away but there's a tiny little handwritten <coughs> ten just in the top corner of the headstock. So we here. thought someone judged it a ten out of ten. Yeah, but they don't. Apparently every time they get a shipment of flame maple, um, they pick the ten percent of the best stuff call that a 10 top and you pay a premium for that and then the rest of the guitars are used um, you know, to make regular custom shop stuff, custom stuff. Um, and now of course where Andertons can get you some value there is because we hand pick all of ours so we don't just order stuff and it gets sent through with the physically the guy comes around with like 20, 30 guitars and we say we'll have that one and that one and that one. What can happen quite regularly is if PRS get a shipment where there's lots of really good maple even though the, t the, the top 10% will get put to one side, there, are, there, there could be like 20, 30, 40 guitars made from the remainder of it that are still super beautiful, but mm. don't get the price tag uh, jump that a 10 top has. So it's up to you really as a customer, you can buy a 10 top and then you're absolutely guaranteed to get something spiffingly beautiful or come to Anderton's, have a look through and you'll probably find some really amazing, beautiful non 10 tops as well that, that don't then have the surcharge. Like a nine and a half top. A nine and a half top. We've got new sort of vintagey style open machine heads that have only been used on these for the last few years. Uh, what else is cool? You get a little nice case, you get a tag that tells you that um, somebody who put this together, uh, Pat Thin put um, this together, so cheers Pat. Actually he seems to have made a lot of the guitars along with his best friend Pat yeah, Regular. You know what's cool? What's cool is that PRS. <laughs> <laughs> it took you a while to get that. <laughs> no, seriously, the guy who put this, the assembled by CH, and the final check was by Nimnit or something. Well, I've always liked Nimnit's work, <laughs> but what I think is cool is that PRS is back at Anderton's. With yes. Super amazing American guitars. So what I've got here is, is um, actually an artist guitar, Rise to Remains guitar, and the dude from PRS has very nicely let me play it. And <laughs> he's doing this. And it's got 5708s, it's a 24. It's actually a slightly older model. This one is a 2010 25th anniversary. It's stunning. Yeah. Really stunning. But the main the main reason we wanted to show you, so obviously again it's got the, the old style rotary switch on it. Yeah. The main reason we wanted to show you this, what's it tuned to? Well, drop B. Drop B with a set of 11 to 52s on it. Now normally, I think if you had a, certainly if you took a, 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 a perhaps a Les Paul or something and tuned it that low, or well, most guitars if you tune it that low, you're going to get um, real problems with basically the strings being so flappy and difficult to retain the tension and therefore tuning issues and stuff like that. But... But no, it's really good. <laughs> and uh, no, I've seen all sorts of bands like Sixth using PRS, super, super math, mm. you know, in your face, um, doom, pain. This is now a badass metal machine. Loads of cool metal bands use PRS. And um, yeah, it sounds and it plays. Do it. It was great. Do it. <laughs>
it's, it's tight and focused. That's the reason it's tight. good for this. Uh, tight. tight. Tight and focused. <laughs> that. What was the baddie in Austin Powers that said, Toit. I t- it's tight. Uh, <laughs> well, he, he was the um, lucky charm. Goldfinger, wasn't <laughs> Is he the one with Lucky Charles? I thought it was Probably. Goldfinger. Yeah. But he, he was cool to him. Maybe you anyway. can tell us in the comment section um, below. And they, they are 5708s, which I'm guessing yeah. are a slightly sort of a more throwback vintage kind of. Uh, well, here's an interesting thing. Cause a Is lot that of, correct? Yeah, yes. a lot of guitar brands. Stand by! Stand by! Stand by, motherfucker! Stand by. Can you speak it? A lot of guitar brands seem to think you've got to put really, really high saturated, heavy output uh, mm. pickups in a guitar, and they, they forget that the kids Don't get really that. high. Don't call them kids. Okay. A lot of guitar companies think you've got to put really high output pickups in guitars, and they, and they don't realise that most metal players mm. have pretty high gain amplifiers. So would you, you'd have one or the other, would you? Either go for you've a got to case, high gain amplifier with a sort of more it, subtle pickup, or presumably if, you, if you've got a more vintage sounding amplifier and you want to drive it hard, that's when you'd have a high gain pickup. Look at it. the king of tone, Malmsteen, with his barely any output pickups at all and a super cranked up Marshall, yeah. you get a wicked open hollow tone. So we're going to play. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, stay tuned because there'll be a few other videos going up uh, uh, over the next few days, particularly cool videos that I am looking forward to doing today. A comparison of uh, a Custom 24 to uh, an SE Custom 24. Uh, we're going to do a comparison between a, 20, a 2013 Custom 22, I think we're going to use, versus uh, a 2013 Gibson Les Paul Standard. So we're going to sort of shoot out and tell you what the differences are Ooh. there. And we're going to take a look at, if you look over uh, Rob's left shoulder here, a very, very pretty looking guitar, uh, which is uh, what's called a Paul's guitar. So this is, this is Paul Reed Smith's, the guitar that he's kind of made for himself, um, which is very cool as well. So. I hope you've enjoyed watching our video. Yes, and sorry if it's been chopped into little bits because they were tarmacking outside and I had to have a break to have some cookies. Yeah. And and most of, like, almost every section at and some point. Basically, just reasons. But I've been Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. Take it easy. Thank you.